Hello everyone, it's Brian. Uh, whether you like it or not, this will be part three of Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, OMD. And unfortunately, we are entering my least favorite period of OMD. So rather than do one long video of my least favorite part, I broke it down into two videos of my least favorite part to keep them a little, uh, a little shorter. If there's any consolation, it's that this uh, period made me appreciate some of the earlier stuff a little bit better. So I like Crush a little better after hearing this. I like Junk Culture a little bit better after hearing this. And I guess that's the silver lining there, but uh, so let's get into it. So we're gonna start with August 26, 1986. And again, I have a couple of notes here, and this is the advanced single from a record called The Pacific Age. So this is Forever Live and Die, which was a very popular song, I heard it many times in many places. So it has the extended mix of Forever Live and Die, it has the seven inch version, and it has a track called This Town. So I think it was a popular track. They continue to play it in concert. Once again, produced by Stephen Haig, who produced Crush. So he's the guy that worked with New Order, Pet Shop Boys, etc. So that sort of uh, very synthy sound, very synth pop sort of new wave sound. I did make note of a couple of reviews of this. Um, one reviewer said, almost worthy of prime period ABBA. It's ethereal Ural synthetics melting across a chorus that ascends towards heaven. So he put that on the positive column for that one. Versus uh, this little statement from someone who said it was limp, languid, wimpy, and totally inoffensive, whatever that means. So that sort of gives you the idea of what's going on here. Not loved by everyone. I think people maybe look fondly upon their previous work. The record that came out about a month later is called The Pacific Age. So I got it sideways. The Pacific Age. It's had a number of singles on it. Um, and again, fits the sound of that single. We have some band images here. And there's less electronic pioneering sound here, more pop, and I would say the reaction was largely negative. <laughs> so I did make note of a couple of statements, which I think were pretty funny. Uh, one reviewer said, wheezing, crumpled and limp, a bitter, bitter disappointment. And someone else said, slick and slobbery, just a bunch of bored sounding professionals, really. And another person said it was a dilettantish mess, is less a set of songs than a meaningless collections of sounds. I think all those go a little too far, but even Andy McCluskey said he felt the band at this point had lost the plot. And the sad news is that after this period, um, which I've broken into two parts, the band disappeared for a long time. So um, that's kind of sad. Well, I think the Wiki Wikipedia entry mentions that um, the recording sessions were fraught with conflict and debauchery. Now, I understand conflict. I'm not sure what they mean by debauchery. So in this record, I will say I do like the track Forever Live and Die. It's a track called Southern, which is um, a speech by Martin Luther King Jr. set to music, which I think is very interesting and noble. I don't mind Shame. Dead Girls is pretty good. Flame of Hope is okay. I never really liked the track Stay, which is subtitled The Black Rose and the Universal Wheel. And on that, uh, Andy McCluskey agrees with me. I, I heard an interview in which he, he said that track wasn't one of his favorites. So I would say in isolation, each song sounds okay, but as a collection, as an album, I don't think it works as well as some of the other stuff. Um, something unsatisfying about them, to be honest. So not, yeah, so the worst was yet to come though. Let me just say that. <laughs> Uh, the next single is a track called We Love You. This one's a bit beat up, but it has the extended version of We Love You, 7-inch version, and the dubbed version of We Love You. It's an okay track. It's There's not much to say about it. It's it's a song that I don't know if it made the radio anywhere, but it's, it's okay. The third single is a track called Shame. Now, this 12-inch single is interesting because it has the album version of Shame from the Pacific Age but it has a shorter re-recorded version and an extended re-recorded version, which is almost seven minutes long. The difference is that they sped up the tempo. The, if you know the track on, on the Pacific Age, it's slow, and I think maybe in hindsight they thought it would maybe be too slow, so for the single they sped it up, so it has a faster tempo. I think I prefer the original version better, but it's not 
terrible. Um, yeah, so it's it's okay. And, and again, none of these these songs really caught on with me as much as some of the earlier stuff. But this is not terrible by any means. It's just my least favorite to this point. And then in um, so that came out. That was April nineteen eighty seven. And then in nineteen eighty eight. In early January, the band released a track called Dreaming. And uh, on this 12-inch single, we have three versions of Dreaming. A club mix, a 7-inch edit, and a dub version, and a track called Satellite. And um, it's fine. It's, it's, it sounds like it could, could have been on the Pacific Age in, so, in some respects. Maybe better than some of the stuff on the Pacific Age. But for whatever, whatever reason, it didn't appear there. I don't know if it had been written by then. Instead, um, uh, but oh, before I say where it ended up, um, McCluskey said he wished that they had never released it. So again, a track that um, he didn't really like. I, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's actually okay. But the track does appear on the best of OMD, which came out on February 29th, 1988. Oddly, February 29th would have been a leap day on a leap year. So that's something that's interesting. Side 1 covers the period 1979 to 1984, and Side 2 covers 1985 to 1988. And the last track you'll see from 88 is Dreaming. So we've talked about all these songs before. Personally, I like Side 1 better. The other thing to note is that these are not always the single or album versions. There's a various different... I read a list of it once, and I can't remember them all, but there's differences. These are not necessarily the tracks you would have known had you followed along with the band. Uh, but this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good collection, and I think it works well. It's um, one copy, and for some reason I have two copies. This has the two copies, the hype sticker, and a Music World price tag, seven ninety nine. Imagine that. So a pretty good collection. In uh, nineteen eighty eight, I don't know the date, the band released a kind of wacky track called Brides of Frankenstein. Now side A has the mix, uh, just something called Brides of Frankenstein mix, 7 minutes 14 seconds, and side B has a dub version 618. So this is a medley of portions of songs with dance rhythms by, I'm going to have to read this because I won't remember, Mike Hitman Wilson and Steve Silk Hurley. And it was released in the USA and Canada only as far as I know. Um, the tracks used are Locomotion, Messages, Secret, So in Love, If You Leave, We Love You, and I will say that it's quite terrible. It's the worst kind of medley you can imagine. All the songs you might like, but mixed in with a dance beat, which I don't get the point of it. Now, in the year later, the band officially disbanded in, in, in that Andy... Uh, went on his own because Paul and the other members formed a different band called The Listening Pool. I guess the official explanation was creative differences. I have never heard anything from The Listening Pool, and um, so I don't, I can't really say what that's like, but Andy went on his own under the name of OMD, and I would say that this sort of um, danceable backbeat here seems to have been his departure point because when he um, started releasing records again in 1991, it has that sort of um, up-tempo dancing stuff, which I didn't like at all, but I will talk about next time. So that's all I'm going to say today. Nice short video under nine minutes. Uh, thanks again for watching.